Hi, I'm Chad with Move for a Guitar. This lesson is from our series, How to Read Music for a Guitar. In this lesson, I'm going to show you where the notes on the staff actually land on your guitar's fretboard. First off, if you like all the diagrams for this series, including the diagrams for this lesson, you can download our free e-guide, How to Read Music for a Guitar. But I am working on it right now as I'm filming this lesson, so it might not be available as you're watching this lesson. If it is available, a link will pop up on the screen that will allow you to download it. And like I said, it's free, so there's no reason not to download it when it is available. This is part six from our series, How to Read Music for a Guitar. If you'd like to go back and start at the beginning, you can click the link on the screen. So I've been showing you notes on the staff like this, and they've all been written as letters, but I told you that obviously when you're looking at music, you're not gonna have actual letter names written out. You're gonna have some sort of dot. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just change this to dots. Now this isn't exactly what notes look like, but it's gonna give a pretty good representation of a note on the staff or on a ledger line so that you'll be able to start in your head being able to visualize where a note lands on the staff or on a ledger line and what the actual note name is. Instead of seeing letter names, you're actually gonna see the dot of some sort like a note and be able to recognize, oh, right here is a note that's an F because it's in the first space. And that's not something you have to memorize right now or right away, but it's important to start visualizing it this way instead of always looking at the letters. And like I said, this isn't exactly what a note looks like but we'll get into that in an upcoming lesson. So now I just wanna go through with these notes that we've talked about and show you where they actually are on your fretboard. That's obviously really important to understand where they land on your fretboard because even if you know, for example, like I said, this is an F note, you need to know where on your fretboard that lands and the guitar has more than one F note on it, so you need to know which one it actually is. So we'll just start with the lowest one and like I said in the last lesson, that's your open E string. So that's as low as your guitar goes. A six string guitar in standard tuning, that's as low as it goes. You hit your six string, that creates an E note. It's drawn out like this. That's the lowest register of your guitar in standard tuning. So this white circle with the E in it is just representing an open note. All this notes that are on the actual fretboard will be black with white letters. And just to make sure you're really clear looking at this diagram since we haven't shown a fretboard in this series yet, obviously right here is your sixth string, right here is your first string, so the other horizontal lines are your other strings. These are your fret wires, these are your fret markers. And so it's kind of strange to look at it, but this is the way fretboard diagrams are shown. But really this would be up towards the ceiling and this would be down towards the floor. So if you're not used to diagrams, fretboard diagrams, that might be something you have to get used to. So now we can just go through the other notes. The next note is F. It lands on the first fret of your guitar. So this note right here in notation is right here on your guitar. And we can just go through, that's G, that's A. And this is where you actually start getting more than one option once you hit the A. And that's because your guitar has what is called unison notes meaning it's the same name, for example, these are both A, and they're the same pitch, meaning that this right here is A, and both of these are on the same pitch, meaning it's not a higher A up here or anything, or even higher than that. It lands in the same spot when you write it in music. So if you hit those two notes, they're gonna sound pretty much the exact same. It doesn't really on the guitar because it depends on your intonation of your guitar, and different strings sound a little different, but technically they're the same pitch. And if you don't know what unisons are, check out our series, Music Theory for Guitar. I talk all about that and much more. It'll be really useful to you if you don't have that knowledge. And like I said before, I've separated out the music theory and the music reading into two series so that I'm not overloading you with too much at once. I think it's important to focus on little chunks and just build from there. So the next note is B. Again, you have two options because those two notes are unisons to each other. I should have pointed this out already, but a piano doesn't have unison notes. A piano has notes that are just on a line like this. Obviously, everyone knows what a piano is. You know, and you have some black ones and some white ones. And down here are your low notes, and up here are your high notes. Well, they're just on a line. You can't have two notes that sound together. You wouldn't hit this note, and then all of a sudden you hit that exact same note somewhere else. You hit notes with the same names, which are called octaves, which I'll hit on in a second, but they're not the same pitch. This one down here would be at one pitch. This one up here would be at another pitch. So that's something that can be a little hard to learn on the guitar 
is how to actually visualize your unisons and octaves and separate them out. Understanding, well, if I see a B note here and a B note here, they're actually the same pitch. But if I see a B note here, that's not the same pitch, but it is still a B note. And again, if you want to learn more about this, check out our series, Music Theory for Guitar, and I talk all about it. And it'll be really useful too if you don't understand that. So after B, we have C. Again, you have two unison options. After C, we have D. This time you have three unison options. All three of these Ds are the same pitch. So if you see this D written out, you have three different places you can play it. Go up again, we're on E. Again, you have three different places because there's three unison notes. Go up again, we're on F. Again, you have three unison notes. Go up again, you're on G. This time you have four unison notes. So now you have four options to be able to play this note. And then we can just keep going. A, you have four options. B, you probably have five options if you have an electric guitar. I just didn't draw this fretboard out. So if I had drawn this out as far as a lot of electric guitars go, you would actually have that B note as another unison. So that would mean you have five places you could play that B note. If you have an acoustic guitar, you might only have four. Go up again, you have C with four. If you have an electric, you probably have five. Go up again, D, same thing. Now we're on E, and this would be your open first string this time instead of your open sixth string, which was down here with ledger lines. And I've drawn out four, but if you have an electric, you probably have five spots you could play that, all unison notes. Again, F, same thing, G, same thing, A, I've drawn three, but you probably have four with an electric guitar, B, same thing, C, D, I've drawn two, you probably have three, and I just drew it up to E. So this note right here with the three ledger lines being on that last line is your E note, which is in your 12th fret, or there's unison to it on the second string. And then obviously you have more notes. You have an F, you have a G, and so on. And it just depends how high your guitar goes for how many ledger lines you're gonna add on. So right here, is probably not as high as your guitar goes. Even in acoustic, you can usually reach more than that. But I, there was no point to draw it out. It would just be redundant. So like I was saying, your guitar is harder to learn because you have unison notes, harder than a piano as far as visualizing notes. For example, these are three unison notes, exact same pitch, which means if you see this note written out, you have three different places to play them, probably four, if you have more frets. This A, you have all these unisons that you have options for, but these A's, are an octave lower than these A's, which was right here. So this A on your staff, written in music, is an octave lower than this A. And then on your fretboard, it would look like the, this. These are unisons to each other, these two are unisons to each other, but these are octaves apart. And what that means on your fretboard, if I drew an A right here, which is your open string, this A is 12 frets higher. This A on the 12th fret is an octave higher than this open string A, meaning that they're gonna have the same sound, but this one is an octave higher in pitch. And that means that it's cutting your string in half from this A to where how far your string goes. It's cutting it in half, which creates a frequency that ends up being the same note, but a higher pitch. And we don't need to get too much into that, but just, like I said, if you really wanna dive into that and where your octaves are on your fretboard, check out our music theory for guitar. It'll explain this a lot more. So those are where the notes land on your fretboard. I went through it really quick, and it was just to show you and give you a reference. I don't expect you just to memorize that just by this lesson. It's something you memorize over time. But at least now, if you download our e-guide, you have a reference. You can always go look it up. And for example, if you saw this A written right here on your staff, you would know that you have these options on your fretboard. So go ahead and move on to the next lesson where I'm going to talk about sharps and flats. And like I said, be sure to download the e-guide. It has all the diagrams in there. And be sure to subscribe because we add at least one new lesson every day.